today we are here to study the evolution of physics from the philosophy the physics as a discipline evolved from philosophy and now the advancement of physics is leading back to metaphysics which is another form of philosophy so the present talk is devoted to the journey from the philo subject of philosophy to physics as a discipline basically let's start with the definition of physics what is physics it's a natural science that it studies matter its motion and behavior through space and time and the related entities of energy and force it is one of the most fundamental scientific disciplines and its goal is to study the universe it is the oldest academic discipline and through its inclusion of astronomy is the oldest elements of what became physics we are drawn primarily from the fields of astronomy optics and mechanics which we are methodologically united to the study we will start with the first known philosopher well known philosopher thales he falls from a place called miletus and the philosophers are divided into two the pre socratic ones those who were before the socrates and the post socratic ones so he was a pre socratic philosopher and he was the first physicist in the real sense and he believed that the world onto fashioned from many materials was really built of one element called water and in greek it called physis and the interaction of this water between the phases of liquid solid and gas gave the material its properties then came another philosopher alexander he was also a pre socratic philosopher and he was famous for his proto evolutionary theory and he disputed the idea of thales and proposed that rather than water a substance called epiron was the building block of matter and this epiron is similar to the idea that the hydrogen is the building block of all matter in the universe there was another philosopher heraclitus he was also a pre socratic philosopher and he proposed that the only basic law governing the universe was the principle of change and that nothing remains in the same state indefinitely everything changes then there were two philosopher lucipus and democritus Democritus was a student of Lucipus and they opposed the idea of direct divine intervention in the universe Lucipus and his, his student developed the first atomic theory arguing that matter could not be divided indefinitely and one would eventually arrive at individual pieces that could not be cut into so this we can take it as a uh, name of atom atom means have been derived from the word a and tom tom is to cut and a means not to cut that means we cannot cut it further then came the famous philosopher aristotle he was a student of plato and he promoted the concept that observation of physical phenomena could ultimately lead to the discovery of natural laws governing them and his writing covered physics metaphysics poetry theater music logic linguistics politics government ethics biology and zoology and he wrote the first book which refers to that line of his study as physics in the 4th century bc and he founded the system known as the aristotelian physics 
He attempted to explain ideas such as motion and gravity with the theory of four elements. And those four elements were earth, water, air, and fire. And he said that all the matter was made up of ether, which is a combination of these four. According to Aristotle, these four terrestrial elements are capable of intertransformation and move toward their natural place. So a stone falls downward toward the center of the cosmos, but flame rise upward toward the circumstance. Water flowed downwards because the realm of water lay below the realm of earth. And it remained, this the idea main, remained mainstream scientific paradigm in Europe until the time of Galileo and Newton. Then came many philosophers like Aristotheles, Aristarchus, Seleucus, Plutarch. And the, like in early Greece, that knowledge that the earth is spherical was common. And in around 240 BC, as a result of the seminal experiment, Aristotheles accurately determined the circumference. In contrast with Aristotle's geocentric views, Aristarchus presented an explicit argument for a heliocentric model of the solar system. Seleucus followed him and stated that Earth rotated around its own axis, which in turn revolved around the Sun. Then came Archimedes. Archimedes was a great mathematician and he devised the system of the pulleys. Apart from that, the hydraulic uh, principle, the flow principle of the floating bodies, the screw, screw from which we can transfer water from lower height to a greater height. After him came Hipparchus, who focused on astronomy and mathematics, and he used geometry, uh, geometrical techniques to map the motion of the stars and the planets. And he added calculations of the distance of the sun and the moon from the earth. And he was also one of the most famous of his early physicists, we are Ptolemy, and one of the leading minds during the time of the Roman Empire. He was the author of the several scientific treatises, at least three of them were known as Elmangist. We cannot forget Leonardo da Vinci. He was basically an engineer in the real sense. And he is credited with the invention of parachute, helicopter and tank. He carried out dissections and documentation of muscles, nerves, and vessels, which helped to describe the physiology and mechanics of the movement. He attempted to identify the sources of emotions and their expression. Thus, he was a real philosopher who attempted to identify the emotions. And he made the observation that humors were not located in several spaces or ventricles. He documented that the humors were not contained in the heart or the liver, and it was the heart that defined the circulatory system. He was the first to define liver cirrhosis. He created models of cerebral ventricles with the use of melted wax and constructed a glass aorta to observe the circulation of blood through the aortic wall by using water and gas seed to watch flow patterns. Then came Nicholas Copernicus, and he formulated a model of the universe that placed the sun rather than the earth at the center of the universe. There was, then came Galileo Galilei, and he is the father of the observational astronomy, also the father of the modern physics and the father of the scientific method. He was the first scientist to observe phenomena systematically that we do in the modern science. He carried out experiments, recorded the results, and published them. That is why he is also known as father of modern physics.
and he studied the speed velocity inertia on the projectile motion he observe in observational astronomy he constructed his telescope and observed the three phases of venus the observation of the four largest satellites of jupiter and he observed the saturn ring these are the telescope he <coughs> constructed and these are placed in the university of pisa where he used to work then came sir isaac newton and everybody is quite evident through his book the mathematical principles of natural philosophy you can see that the book itself says that it is describing the mathematics of the natural philosophy and the ideas being published are philosophical in nature newton also made contributions to optics the laws of motions the universe gravitational then came bernoulli which gave the bernoulli famous bernoulli principle for the conservation of energy in the liquid flow then came edmund halley in uh, recorded transit of mean mercury across the sun and he realized the similar transit of venus which could be used to determine the size of the solar system and he studied comets and he used the laws of motion to compute the periodicity of the halley's comet which was later on named after him then came charles augustin who gave many ideas on charge the nature of charge the, the concept of charge in terms of electricity and magnetism to his many works he also gave the force acting between the two bodies then came henry cavendish and he discovered hydrogen which is termed as inflammable here and apart from that he experimented to measure the density of the earth to the cavendish famous cavendish experiment he discovered that air exhaled by mammals is converted into fixed air which is nothing but convert dioxide and not phlogisticated air and ken thomas young and young is described as the last man who knew everything he was a philosopher in the real sense and the major of his uh, contributions are in the field of optics then came lord kelvin who devised the telegraph he was basically an engineer telegraph engineer and you can see the machines which he used to play with and he extended the carnot clairon theory and he worked on the thermodynamics he devised the temperature scale and the second law of thermodynamics he also contributed to second law of thermodynamics then came clark maxwell maxwell contributed to many branches the maxwell's equations converting the uh, electric and the magnetic field are really remarkable and they revolutionized the science of electrodynamics thank you rontgen who discovered x-ray and he was the first winner of the nobel prize in physics in 1901 then kef planck who was awarded nobel prize in 1918 and uh, he is the originator of the quantum theory and kef albert einstein who contributed photoelectric effect brownian motion special relativity and mass and energy equivalence and he got the nobel prize in 1921 and he is most influential work is on the philosophy of science then came enrico fermi who is uh, the architect of the nuclear age and he was awarded the nobel prize in 1938 
for his Fermi Dirac statistics and the particles, the species of particles from fermions. Then came Heisenberg, who proposed the matrix formulation of quantum mechanics. And in other words, he postulated the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. And he can be regarded as one of the major contributors to the nanotechnology. Then came Edward Teller, who is the father of the hydrogen bomb. Then lastly, we can see a notable philosopher, Stephen Hawkins, who wrote a brief history of time, which is a record seller till now. And we see that all the scientists that we have discussed were philosophers. Whatever they contributed, was through their philosophical ideas, through their thinking. The role of experiments was there, but the experiments were limited to just uh, justify or to verify the philosophical ideas. So physics, physics basically evolved from philosophy. Like if I say that Newton gave the concept of gravity, he noticed that the apple falls due to gravity. Apple was falling before uh, Newton noticed. But Newton gave the concept. He applied his mind, he applied his thinking to the falling of the apple. And then he gave the postulate of that. So the purpose of this talk was to understand that the science of physics has evolved from philosophy and physics has two branches of study, theoretical and experiment. So theoretical has much to do with philosophy. Without thinking, you will not get new ideas in physics. It's the thinking, it's the process that gives you new ideas that you can apply and verify them experimentally. 